in this mixed practice skill, you're going to be doing exactly the same questions as you've done in the previous skills. The only difference is that there's no conversion table provided for you. You have to draw that yourself. So before you're ready to complete these questions, make sure you're feeling really confident on the previous three skills. Then you'll be ready to tackle these questions that don't have as much scaffolding. Okay, so in this question, a scientist wants to determine how many moles of copper, Cu, would be needed to react completely with 153 grams of oxygen, O2. Okay, so let's write out our plan of what we're going to do. So we're starting with 153 grams of oxygen. And we want to figure out moles of copper. So that's our goal, to get from grams of O2 to moles of copper. Now, since the question is given in grams, we know we're going to have to convert that to moles before we can do anything with it. So our first step is going to be converting into moles of O2 from grams of O2. Then we can convert directly from moles of O2 to moles of copper using our equation to find the conversion factor. So this is going to be a two-step calculation. First going from grams to moles of oxygen, then going from moles of oxygen to moles of copper. Okay, so let's draw out our dimensional analysis table. So first let's write out our question, which is 153 grams of O2. And then let's draw our train tracks. We want two columns available for our calculations since we've got two steps. Okay. So our first step is to convert from grams of O2 to moles of O2. To do that, we're gonna to need to use our molar mass because that's what we use to convert from grams to moles. So let's go to our product table and find the molar mass of oxygen. Here's oxygen. And we can see its relative atomic mass is 16.00 grams per mole. So let's write that down, 16.00 grams per mole. And in O2, we have two oxygens. So two oxygens, that's two sets of 16.00, which gets us 32.00 grams per mole. And remember, what that means is that 32.00 grams of O2 equals one mole of O2. So that's going to be our conversion factor that we use for our first step in our dimensional analysis. Okay, so we've got grams of O2. We don't want to end up with grams of O2. So I'm going to put grams of O2 on the bottom here. And I want to get moles of O2. So I'm going to put moles of O2 on the top. Then I need to add in my numbers so that the top and bottom of the fraction are equal. So I know that one mole of O2 equals 32 Point zero zero grams of O2. Okay, so that's our first step, going from grams of O2 to moles of O2. Our next step is going from moles of O2 to moles of copper. To do that, we're going to need to use our balanced chemical equation. So first, we're going to need to balance it. So we've got a chemical equation here. Let's go ahead and draw a table that we can use to figure out if it's balanced. So I've got my elements. I've got my reactants and I've got my products. I've got copper and oxygen. So right now in the reactants, I've got one copper and I've got two oxygens. And in my products, I've got one copper and one oxygen. So right now I can see my copper looks balanced, but my oxygen isn't. I'm gonna to have to add some more oxygen on the right hand side in the products. So instead of having a one before the CuO, I'm gonna add a two before the CuO and see if that fixes it. So I can go ahead and recalculate my reactants and products. So for copper, I've still got one in the reactants and for oxygen, I've still got two in the reactants. Now in the products, I've got two sets of CuO. So I've got two copper in the products and two oxygen in the products. 
Okay, so now oxygen looks to be balanced, but copper isn't. I've got one copper on the left in the reactants. I'm gonna need two there to match with the products. So I'm gonna add a two there, and I'm gonna recalculate this just to check that we've gotten it right. So I now have two copper in the reactants, two oxygen in the reactants, and in my products, I've got two copper and two oxygen. Great, so my copper is balanced, my oxygen is balanced, that means my whole equation is balanced and I'm ready to go and fill this out. Okay, and now we can use this equation to get our conversion factor between copper and oxygen. So here's copper, I've got two moles of that. Here's oxygen, I've got one mole of that. So that would give me a conversion factor that says two moles of copper equals one mole of oxygen. That's gonna be my conversion factor for my second step in my dimensional analysis. So moles of O2, that's gonna go on the bottom because we want that to cancel out. Moles of copper, that's gonna go on the top because that's what we're trying to find in the end. Then we can put in our numbers. So we've got one mole of O2 equal to two moles of copper. Okay, wonderful. So now I'm ready to go ahead and cancel out units that are the same on the top and the bottom. So grams of O2 cancels, moles of O2 cancels, and we're left with moles of copper, which is great because that's what the question's asking us to find. Then we're gonna multiply everything on the top, multiply everything on the bottom, and divide top by bottom. So that gives 153 multiplied by one, multiplied by two moles of copper, divided by 32.00 multiplied by one. And if we put that in our calculator, that gives us 9.56 moles of copper. So we can fill that in our answer box here. So as you can see, this question is exactly the same as the previous skill and the previous skill before that. The only difference is that we don't have that scaffolding to help us. We have to find the balanced chemical equation ourselves. We have to find the molar mass ourselves. We have to use those to get our conversion factors and we have to draw our dimensional analysis table ourselves. So there's a lot going on in these questions, but they are the exact same questions as the previous skills. So if you need to, go back and do the extra practice in those so that you're ready to complete these. And as always, I suggest that you start by writing out a plan showing what you're starting with, what you're ending up with, and how you're gonna get there, as that will decide what your steps are in your dimensional analysis table.